Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Canna, back with another video. Uh, I just wanted to follow up with my prior making a hip hop or trap beat in Reaper as I've personally progressed as a producer. Um, I've learned a few different techniques and kind of streamlined my workflow in Reaper, if you will, um, that may help you guys in your own productions. So whether picking up on those techniques, the shortcuts, learning a plugin, or simply navigating the DAW itself, um, there's a lot of hidden gems in here. So I, I encourage you to bear with me till the end. Um, you know, make sure and stick around. I don't script or pre-compose this stuff, so bear with me. Um, if you're a return listener, you already know the drill. Uh, we, we fans are, are winging it. <laughs> uh, so let's get a session opened up and uh, we'll get started. Um, you know, thank you all for the continued support. You keep me motivated, uh, the streams, the engagement, so on and so forth. You, you know what's good. Um, and if you have any suggestions, something that, uh, you know, you'd like me to address um, in terms of how to... Um, joint just kicked in. Wowzers. Um, <clears throat> how to do something in Reaper. You got something specific, drop it in the comments below. Um, I'm more than receptive to, uh, you know, suggestions. <laughs> All right, so we got a new session opened up. Look at that. I can play my piano. I figured out my buffers. So we're going to start with a melody because that's my preference. That's just what I do. Um, I've been doing a lot with pianos lately, so I kind of want to try not to. Um, but let me show. Let's see. How do we want to do this? <sighs> Actually, we're going to. Not everybody plays, so let's see. Let's do this for y'all's benefit. I'm gonna show you a technique if I'm if I'm just kind of clicking around trying to find some inspiration. Um, oh, where the hell are they? It's in MIDI. This unison in MIDI chord pack. Let's just get a bass chord progression going. Um, Not like that third chord at all. If you guys didn't know, in the MIDI Explorer, so these are obviously MIDI files, um, that unison chord pack. Uh, you just drag them, drop them into your DAW. But if you have a track enabled, um, honestly, or obviously your record monitoring on, um, in this case I've got an Addictive Keys instance, but if you click this autoplay down here, as you select the samples, it'll play for you. Um, so if you if you use a lot of MIDI, this is a good a good way to hear the progression with the instrument you have selected for your your arrangement. Uh, side note. <clears throat> Got to get this going. Um, I'm going to get rid of this last. Carry that out. Right mouse click and drag to select those if you didn't know. Loop it. So double click, create a new track. I'm gonna throw a guitar VST on here. And we're gonna start there. And all I'm gonna do <clears throat> right now, we're still building on the melody. So we just laid down our our root, the core, the core chord progression, and we're gonna build on top of that. Um, I'll probably add some guitar strums on a lower end, kind of thicken up the bottom, and then we'll do a counter melody um, just in some plucked higher notes and find some kind of uh, 
Man, that took forever. A fucking horsefly bite on the top of my hand. I'm cracking out on it. Itching it like a fiend. Oh, my gosh. All right. <clears throat> Guitar loaded up. Turn our monitoring on. It's the best part about playing. If you've got controllers, pluck around. Even if you don't know music theory, just learn. You know, train your ear. You'll 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 progress with repetition. Um, but you can get such a better sound, um, especially out of artificial instruments. It just humanizes it, man. I highly, highly encourage it. Um, so we're just gonna drag these down. effect right there. find another sound uh, probably a different kind of pluck let's see um, actually let's dick around with this I just got this the other day it's track god <clears throat> I still gotta download the rest of the patches but it seems all right plucks let's turn on our record monitor I just like selecting sounds <clears throat> with the rest of my track going, puts it into context. See? That sounds like shit. Man.
insert new media item. Oh. Double click up top. Select all four bars. Insert new media item. Double click. Brings up your piano roll. You hit the eyeball on the track. Now we got ghost notes. So I hate clicking in melodies. click apply track tack effects as mono output and it's going to render uh, the VST to the track as a wave sample and then we're going to crop to active take and I can clear this off of there and we still got our sound so now we can process it a little more I'm going to add some delay EQ it
another technique I like to use, add a little more texture um, to my melodies, is we're going to, especially to thicken up that bottom end and give it a little more dynamic. We're going to pull a little more out of the low end here. And I'm going to add half time. And we're going to utilize it as a send from our chord track and blend it in to taste. Shit, this is taking forever. I'm sorry, guys. Bam. Let's open up our Media Explorer and start picking the rest of our sounds. Um, bum, bum. I've actually been working on... Let's see if any of these work. I've been playing around with some sound design. Um, that's whack. What the fuck is that? Really? I don't even, why did I even save that as a kick? <laughs> All right, now, let's go. This is actually, this is a pack I bought, I think, for 20 bucks. DJ Shoddy P. Shoddy? What about Shoddy? Um, it's got some good sounds in it, though. I won't lie. I've, it's kind of been my go-to lately. Um, again, hear them in context. We're using your clap. So control click on the sample. That's how I'm duplicating it. I'm dragging it to the third. Obviously our grid space is on quarters. Now to arrange the kick, I like to go to eighth notes. placing them. selected hat into the sampler channel number of voices the one note semitone shifted
sometimes I like to just dick around and find a find a rhythm um, and you can record this in it's gonna go in as MIDI input you can quantize it as you see fit and then make your adjustments but again it's gonna give it a little more natural humanized feel um, rather than just punching them in every other step on eighth notes um, so we will get rid of the loop record enable Okay. Cut it to our eight bar loop, double click, control A. We know most of those were eighth notes. So we'll keep it mild. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. Yeah, let's see what let's see how it sounds. We'll try it. Absolutely not. So we'll try quantize on eights. So now you got some diversity in your velocities. You'll just come up with hat patterns that you wouldn't typically click in. Um, but now we'll put it back on loop and we'll start making some adjustments and add a little more flair. Okay, another thing I like to do is layer my hi-hats. Uh, control D, we'll dupe, oh no, it's duplicated that way, dummy. And we don't want to delete the whole track either. Get it together, can I? Control click drag. I'm gonna call this one the rolls. And we're gonna come in.
a little more dynamic to it um open hats so on and so forth but for sake of the video i'm trying to keep this condensed but i think we're already three million hours into it we'll see <coughs> um Maybe. Need to defrag my computer. Um, Let's see what she sounds like. Easy cheat on 808s. Get her to the top end of your chord progression. And there's your root bass line. Starting on F. It's a little low, so we're going to bring it up here to this F. Basic beat. Um, obviously, needs a lot more polish 
<clears throat> I should really start scripting these things so I have a little bit of direction. I personally don't care for the beat, but we just run with it. Uh, whatever. But that's something to consider, too, as a producer. Not uh, not every beat's going to be your favorite, man. Um, but put it together. Complete it. Bang it out. You'll learn something in the process, um, whether that's in sound selections, arrangement techniques, your mix, whatever it be, practice makes better. Uh, so spend the time doing it. And who knows, man? <laughs> your least favorite track might be the one that gets you a placement. You know? Just put them out there. What do you got to lose? Uh, music is art, and it's it's interpreted different by everybody. So what you may not dig somebody may not may love you know you, you, you feel it um so quick after we're gonna call this we're gonna call this done just for the sake of, of moving on and kind of showing you the rest of my process um now we start regain staging each of these tracks so this is one of the only times i really use any solo techniques um, but we're gonna solo out our first melody here loud as hell so you can use the eq you could use compression. Uh, there's a couple of different options, but I want this to max about the negative 12 dB. So one of my preferred methods is always to come into the plugin, uh, uh, whatever VST is generating the sound, and adjust the master channel there. All right, that's where we want it. Let's add in our guitar chords. I want to maintain this negative 12 dB. That's fine. So I'm going to throw some light compression on the sum of that melody, that bus track. Now, there's a few different ways um, I'll go about kicks, and it really depends on the energy I want out of the track. Um, and so we'll kind of discuss and go along with that here. But we don't ever want to lose it in the mix. Um, the kick and the snare are some of the most... What's the word I'm looking for? I mean, for me, as, as a listener, that's the driving force of the track. Bass lines, melodies, it's all well and good, but the, what keeps you in the rhythm, what you bob your head to, I mean, it's, it's all the kick drum. Let's be real with it. That's where the real rhythm of the track comes from. It's what we dance to, so on and so forth. Um, so depending on the energy I want out of the track is going to be on my approach. If we solo out this kick, you'll notice we got about, Not a whole lot. She's clipping, but I think it's maxed. I mean, whoever created the kick sample just put the limiter um, at zero decibels and pushed it to the max. So a couple ways we can go about it. We can reduce the source sample. Um, I'm going to go by about 6 dB. I like my kick to hit right around 6 dB. And again, I would rather manipulate the source. As you can see, there we go, 6 dB on the master channel. Um, than using your faders in this gain staging process because they lose a lot of sensitivity. Um, you don't have minute adjustment, if you will. Um, so I like to use these as a last level of balancing after I glue the whole track together. Um, so kick's about where we want it. Bring the snare in. She's pretty good. This is a good clean sample. We're just going to take shed a couple decibels volume off of them. Capping at that six. I'll take it. Hi hats aren't bad. We adjusted these in here already. It's a little high. So <clears throat> we know these channels are together. I'm going to select them both by holding shift and we're just going to drag the volume down. I don't like my hi-hats too in your face. I've noticed that reference in a lot of my older tracks. Um, they're just too strong in the mix. Another thing I like to do with my hats is pan them out a little bit. Imagine 
imagine a drum kit in your head. Where's the hi-hat sit? Just left of the snare. Where's the snare sit? Just left of the kick drum. So we're going to pan the snare a little bit to the left as well. Kick runs down the center. If you want to get real creative on these rolls, just create more space. We'll kick these out to the right side. Crash, I like to pan a little bit. And the reverse will give opposite of where the crash is. Again, create that stereo imaging. this 808 quite a bit so I want some headroom I'm gonna shoot for about 12 DB there we go our base by waves if you do not have it I would highly suggest it in terms of polishing low end frequencies if you do any sound design uh, I've made some badass kick drums out of a cardboard granola bar box. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it does, but it focuses on frequencies. You can squash them, gain reductions, and then, again, focusing on that frequency. Uh, there's some great presets. Dave Pensado's bass is one of my personal favorites, but listen to the fatness, just the difference. So without, here's with. And by boosting those higher frequencies, you'll notice you'll hear your 808s better on smaller speakers, little headphones, cell phones, so on and so forth. From there, I'm going to EQ it. <clears throat> I've got a pre-made 808 preset that I utilize. We cut around the 50 hertz. That's kind of the body of the kick. And then I'll just make slight adjustments. relative to the track shaving everything off over a thousand hertz we don't really need it in there and she's capping about six that leaves me some room on the actual fader So there's our basic beat. Um, that's pretty much the process outside of this. Obviously, we have track arrangement, um, build up the intro, your hook, your bridges, your verse areas, so on and so forth. The last thing I do um, on the master channel, dependent on the sound selection, what I feel I need, sometimes we'll throw a tape saturator on here. Uh, big fan of the J37 by Abbey Road. They've got a couple good presets to start from. Again, listen for reference. Fat tight and open. And then a mid frequency enhancer. A couple of my favorites. But you can you can play. You can fuck around. I mean, there's all kinds of nonsense in here. So we still got pretty good level. Throw on a stereo compressor. We're gonna go with a two to one ratio. Twenty to one, wow. Two whore. Two. Oh, it doesn't let me do the colon. That's interesting. Alright. Fast attack. We got like ten milliseconds. About three decibels attenuation, and then I'm gonna give it a little bit on the makeup gain. From here, limiter, and that's it. Keep it simple. Again, watch the attenuation meter here. We're looking for about 
three, one to three decibels. Uh, and that's it. That would get rendered. You can hear that tape saturator. That would get rendered. That's that's the process. Um, you know, sound selection, composition, balance with EQs, you know, get rid of low ends where they're not needed, high ends, boost what you need, so on and so forth. Balance all your sounds, your gain staging. And then if you come into our mixer channel now, you're going to notice, look at how consistent these faders are across the board because we balance from the source so there's less processing it's going to give you a million time cleaner signal once it gets to the master channel that's one of my you know <clears throat> my biggest things I, I learned that the hard way uh, less is more you know clean it up at the source is is always your best bet again simple beat um, you know just more so wanted to kind of go over the processes from here we would get into arrangement um, actually here we'll take we'll take 20 seconds we committed this long right uh, da, 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 da. we're gonna glue all these together just so our kicks and snares are a track out like that control click to drag right we know it's an 8 bar loop so we're gonna give ourselves a 16 for the hook 8 bar intro Oops, you gotta have all of these that's one little tidbit too say you just want to copy a section if you highlight in your timeline control and click and drag it's just gonna take what's out of your selection area um, we want all 24 of these bars we're gonna pull them over here for a verse all right <clears throat> So we're going to do no guitar and intro. We know we don't want to kick or snare. Hats, hat rolls. We'll start right there. No crash. We'll leave the reverse. 808 halfway through. Comes in full bodied. And then... Sounds like shit. <laughs> it's just the detuning from the isotope. Oh, yeah, that a little bit blended in better. <clears throat> there. So this is our our hook per se. get the gist oh does he save the beat does he save the beat oh no he doesn't because i'm that picky and 
I just, I really didn't like it. But I hope you guys were able to pick something up from it. Again, thank you for all the support. Thank you for tuning in. Any suggestions for future videos, so on and so forth, just drop some comments down below. You know, I, I stay engaged. I'm going to see them. I'm going to, I'm going to respond. And as long as it's a good suggestion, I'm about it. I'll run with it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, peace.